So some people have come up to say that the kingdom of God, the church, Christianity, pastors are under attack. No, but you know that that's not the case. You know that you've seen a lot of us who are Christians as well speaking against these things. And the real reason is because you have refused to do the right thing. Some of you, I don't know how you sleep at night. I don't know how you can have it on your conscience to know that people have come in, people who were actually born criminals from the moment that they came out of their mother's wombs. Some of these people are related to me. I have one of such who is related to me who goes around parading himself as a pastor. And we, the family members, know that this person is not a pastor. We know that for all of his life, he's been a criminal. But everywhere he goes and calls himself a Christian, those people don't know. And we know that people deliberately wake up and decide that because pastoring is something where people say, touch not my anointed, because pastoring is something where people say, do not judge, they just wake up and decide to go and present themselves as a pastor. They attach that title to their name. So I don't know how you can actually call yourself a Christian or a pastor when you feel comfortable knowing that these people have people who are going to fall into their trap. What do you actually say to yourself? How do you justify this? Is it sometimes because you actually also want us to keep quiet when you do something? Is it because you're saying to yourself, tomorrow I may do something and if I talk now, people are going to talk about me tomorrow and so I must maintain this judge not and touch not my anointed. What is it exactly that is making you maintain this posture? You are thinking sometimes that you want to give grace to someone else. That's probably one of the reasons. Because you know that people can fall and maybe they just made a mistake because they're human. But are you forgetting the millions of them who deliberately lie? Who deliberately go into pastoring and attach the title pastor to their names because they want to take advantage of people? Are you forgetting that some people are insane and that they go into pastoring pretending to be pastors? Are you forgetting that they go and they take authority over other people? How do you sleep well at night knowing that this is what is happening? And some of you are saying now, oh, well, these people are just pretend, uh, these people are just fabricating things and saying oh, it's because the society is full of people who are impoverished. What about that? And, and then you're saying, what about Jerry? Is this um, uh, crusade that was sold out? Oh, look how it's jam-packed. It happened in the UK. Are people also saying published in the UK? How come that place was full? So you see, this is, this is um, the church is going to march on. You need to stop. You need to stop. Two things can exist at the same time. We talk about the one in Africa because we talk about people who are oppressed and who need help and who are desperate. The people in the UK and everywhere else in the world are the same kinds of people where Benny Hinn, who is a well-known and, and formerly, who is a formerly well-known and respected evangelist, was doing the same things that he was doing and he knew he was lying. Those people were not impoverished. Those people believed, just as many believe, that they need a conduit to God. Because of the way that Christianity is preached, it's preached as a religion instead of a lifestyle. The lifestyle is supposed to be one of loving the next person. And this is what pertains throughout all cultures, all over the world, in every corner of the world. You know this. So you can't use that argument that, oh, look, even in the UK where Jerezi had his crusade, the place was jam-packed. So, it's not, it's, uh, so the church of God will not be held down. Nobody's trying to hold down the church of God. But the bottom line is that what we've had in Africa, and, and yes, even in many parts of the developed world, that, that, that is not Christianity. That is not spiritualism. That is religiosity. That is having a form of religion. That is having a form of godliness without any godliness. And that is why Africa is the way it is. Because we have that form of godliness without any godliness. All those other nations where they have those things, they have those people, but they also have people who are reasoning. But in Africa, we don't have those things in place. And so we have a double jeopardy here. We have a case of a double jeopardy. So don't use that argument. It doesn't change anything. 
we want to push down these people these people are not real churches they are not real pastors they are not christians they don't even know god because nobody who knows god will consistently be raping people who are minors nobody who knows god will consistently be stealing from people seeing them impoverished and keep on stealing from them that is not christianity that is not somebody who has fallen who you should not judge or touch not that is somebody that is not somebody who is an anointed person that is somebody who just appended that name to themselves and is walking around, living life, taking advantage of other people. And I don't know how you can be comfortable going to sleep at night, knowing that these people are there taking advantage of other people. And you want us to not touch the anointed, even though you know that many of these people are not anointed. How can you be comfortable like that? And your fear is that we should not judge your fear is that we will be touching the anointed the reason you are afraid of that is because you were born into that teaching by people who deliberately wanted to teach you that so that they could do whatever they wanted to do without anybody speaking and you didn't sit back for one second to think it through because the bible that you use the, thing, the funny thing is that all these things are in plain sight. Even the Bible that you use tells you that by their fruits you shall know them. So by their fruits you shall know them. You see them and you actually know that these people are not men of God. They are not Christian. They are not uh, pastors. But because you were taught that, the fear does not allow you to speak up. What then? Who then are you? What, what then do you stand for? Because obviously, if you don't stand for those things that they do, you will speak up against them. But sometimes, some of you are keeping quiet because you are afraid that it's going to take the very food out of your own mouth. And that's part of why you won't say anything. And the rest, probably because you're afraid that you don't want to go against what was written, touch not my anointed. So if you're that afraid, how come you're giving more weight to touch not my anointed? than to by their fruits we shall know them than to loving your neighbor as yourself than to being your brother's keeper where these people are raping children of 14 years and even less and telling them that this is okay and you know about it but you've never come out and spoken and you see the funny thing is if you had come out before and continued speaking against these people and these things these things would have never come to this point and we would never have had to wake up today to start saying pull them out, throw them out. We wouldn't. This wouldn't even have happened. That's why you need to tell the truth at all times. Be authentic. You knew that you weren't being authentic. You saw those things happening. Sometimes even your conscience was pricked. You weren't happy, but you were too afraid to do the right thing. If you're so afraid to do the right thing, then you need to question your own Christianity. Question your own relationship with God if you, you were so afraid to do the right thing. And you shied away from doing the right thing. Even Benny Hinn came out and confessed that he knew that he was doing the wrong thing. Your prayers are not going to be answered. Your prayers will not get answered by God. And you know, you know what's holding you back. You know the times that you've not been authentic. And you know that that is what your problem is. You know that without a free conscience, you cannot be really free. You know it's that the truth will set you free. You do know.